Hi everyone, welcome to the dog walking volunteer follow-up video and quiz. This is a presentation that goes over the information that you will have already learned from your dog walking orientation with the behavior team. Um, and it's just a follow-up to go over what you learn and just a quick reminder about some of the most important points you'll need to remember while you'll, while you're volunteering here at Jacksonville Humane Society. Here's what a daily schedule of a dog walking volunteer might look like on any given day. The first step is to sign up in Volgistix. It's really helpful when we know uh, how much help we're going to have ahead of time. So this is a really important step. You'll also want to sign in when you arrive for your volunteer shift. There are two sign in stations, one near the vending machines and one near the adoptions office. First, you'll want to go to the food prep room and get a leash, treat pouch, treats, and a toy. Start walking dogs from all areas. This includes dog holding one, dog holding three, dog holding four, included, including the colored adoption areas. For dog holding two, ask a staff member if there are any strays that can be walked from that area. If you are walking from 7.30 a.m. to 10 a.m., please walk your dog by the play yard first and ask the staff inside if they'd like the dog to play or just go for a walk. This is really important because we can get the most amount of dogs out to play group in the minimum amount of time. We have three dog walking sessions, and those are 7 to 10 a.m., 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., and 3 p.m. to close. After all walks have been completed, you can work on enrichment, training, or take a dog to the play yard. At the end of your session, put your leash, toy, and treat pouch away and sign out. As I stated before, if you're here volunteering from 7.30 a.m. to 10 a.m., you'll be asked to walk the dogs by the play yard and see if they can join playgroup. When you walk your dog up, please ask the staff member if they'd like your dog to go into the play yard. Tell them their name and they'll direct you to come into the catch pen or take the dog on a walk. When you bring the dog into the catch pen, you can immediately drop the leash or allow the dog to sniff the other dogs on the fence. Remain in the catch pen until the staff member inside has brought the dog in or has told you any further instructions. They may want you to take a dog back or they may need your assistance getting the dog in the yard. Do not touch the gate unless asked to do so by a staff member.
This is a video on how to use our whiteboards and what all our chicken scratch means um, and how to properly fill out the whiteboards when you come in for your volunteer shift. So we'll start out, um, this is our playgroup column. Um, if you see a Y, this means the dog comes out to playgroup. Yes, they come to playgroup. If you see a PW, that means prefers walk. So this is a dog who may not always prefer to come to playgroup, um, but would just really like to go on a walk. You can see that for a couple of our dogs here. If you see test, this means that the dog is new and has not been into playgroup yet. And so we're not really sure if they prefer walks or if they'd like to come into playgroup. So make sure if you're walking in the morning, you bring uh, especially these test guys next uh, by the play yard but all of these guys that have Y's um, they're gonna come into the play yard as well next we have the name of the dog as well as their location um, we do sometimes try to color coordinate but it just depends on whether or not the expo markers are actually working that day or not um, then we can go back up to the top and we see that we have walk one, walk two, and walk three. And we ask that you put the time and your initials. This allows us to see which dogs have been out the earliest and which dogs need to go out next for their next walk. Um, so we appreciate you guys filling that, that out. Um, we'll also have medical and behavior notes. Um, these are for staff use only. Um, we still ask that if you have any medical or behavior notes, you fill out those little slips and then turn those into us. Um, but you'll see HT for house trained, and um, you may have see some other notes um, here, like check out my mad skills on the A-frame. So someone has been doing some agility work um, with a dog. We also have this wonderful new magnetic clock um, that'll tell you the time just in case case you don't have a, a watch or a cell phone handy while you're walking dogs. Uh, these will be in all of the adoption kennels um, and hopefully in the holding areas soon as well. Please pay attention to any signs that are on or around the dog kennels. You will see both blue and pink signs. The dog walker strategies are a blue sticker and a blue laminated sheet with instructions on them. We've provided some tips on how best to work with these dogs. You cannot walk these dogs. Any volunteer that has taken the dog walking and enrichment class can go in with these dogs and always follow the instructions on the sign. Protocols are a pink sticker and a pink sheet with instructions on them. You cannot walk these dogs. These are dogs that are working on a specific behavioral challenge and only volunteers that have taken the dog walking and enrichment class and protocol training class can walk these dogs. You can walk any dog that has no signs or sticker. If you are walking dogs in the suites, please flip over their cage cards to see strategies or protocols. If you have any questions or concerns about how to work with a dog, please ask a staff member. All right, so we're gonna do a quick demo of how to leash a dog in a kennel. First, you wanna check the pins and make sure to put the appropriate pin down that you're doing the walk for. Remember, there's three shifts, so there should be three pins. You always wanna wait until the dog is calm and has four feet on the floor before entering the kennel. It may take a while and you may have to approach and back away from the kennel many times. Adam's doing a really great job here with Maxwell because he's jumping all over him. And so Adam's choosing to ignore him and wait to harness him until he's more calm. So you can see that as soon as Maxwell picks up that toy and, and is calm, Adam fits that harness onto him and puts it on. You can do this with any dog that has a harness or a leash. You want to make sure that you're not leashing them while they're jumping because you're actually rewarding that jumping behavior. And that's something we want to try to dissuade. Adam's gonna go ahead and leash Maxwell up and do a quick door routine. This is to prevent the dog from dashing out the door the minute you open the door and setting up for more behaviors later, such as wait at the door and things like that. He's gonna open the door, yell, coming out, and then if Maxwell pokes his head through, he's gonna close it again, open it again, close it again, open it again, until Maxwell is distracted or gives him eye contact. He's then going to say free and let Maxwell out of the run. 
So when when you come to walk dogs between 7 and 10, um, the dogs will all be blocked on the adoption side. So we're on the staff side right now. You can see um, that we're on the ugly side of the runs and all the dogs have been blocked on the other side. And you'll want to go ahead and go to your dog's kennel that you're taking out and you can move them over to the staff side and then do your regular leashing routine. This is just helpful when you're leashing an excited dog or when you're bringing a dog back to decrease that reactivity. When you're coming back from a walk, again, the dogs will be blocked on that adoption side. You're gonna enter the run to put the dog away, just like you would normally do. And then toss treats over. And then you can either close it from the outside or you can manually close the guillotine from the inside as well. And that just helps us reduce that reactivity. You can already hear how much quieter it is with our dogs walking in and out of the, of the runs. Now we're gonna work on loose leash walking, and this is something that we should work on right away in the hallway. The dog should have a full leash while walking, and you can start out by just getting the leash on the correct side and the dog on the correct side. If the dog pulls ahead of you to the end of the leash, stop walking and back up until the dog relieves the tension on the leash. You can click and reward if the dog comes back to you. Continue walking forward. If the dog puts tension on the leash again, you wanna stop, move backwards until the dog releases that tension and then you can move forward again. And again, Adam is rewarding Maxwell here for coming back to him. So he's gonna stay closer this time. We're gonna also do the door routine when we exit to the outside. We don't do the door routine when we're exiting from the kennel area because it's too chaotic and there's a lot going on. So we're gonna do that same door routine here. So opening the door, if he pokes his nose through, we close it, we open it again, and we're waiting for that eye contact or for him to not rush to the door. And then we're gonna say free and let him out. If you have time during your dog walking shift when all the dogs are walked, you can bring the dogs out to the play yard. Some dogs really enjoy just running around, but you can also work on adoptable behaviors such as practicing sits, downs, or name recognition. Here's some safety reminders while you're on your shift. If there's ever a dog fight, do not attempt to break it up yourself. If there's a fight in the play yard during playgroup time, do not enter unless you're told to do so by a staff member. They may ask you to take a dog or move out of the catch pen with a dog. Follow their instructions quickly and precisely. In the kennels, occasionally the dogs will fence fight or we have a loose dog. Go out the staff door and yell for help. If no one comes, go out the adoption door and yell for help. If no one shows up, leave and get a staff member and remember where the fight is happening. In the time it takes you to go get help, the dogs will not do much damage to each other and it's better to have help than just have one person trying to break up a dog fight. Never let the dogs meet on leash, even if they were just in the play yard together. Being on leash is different than being in the play yard with staff to monitor them. If you are in the yard, please do not allow people to stick their hands in. You can exit the yard and allow the dog to approach the people. Always read body language. Think back to the presentation you watched before you started your volunteer shift. If you're unsure about a dog, do not enter the kennel and get a staff member. If a dog gets mouthy or over aroused, leave the area and get a staff member to help. If you have them on leash and can't leave the area, try to redirect them with a treat or toy, then come right inside and find a staff member. Thank you so much for volunteering. We certainly appreciate it and the dogs love having you here. 